Hello there, it's Andy Yunes from Formosev once again. Welcome to this How To on IBMI video set. We will be taking a look at RPG enhancements in the latest version of the i operating system 7.5. Since it's the 40th anniversary of me programming in RPG, I thought I would take this milestone to get up to date with the latest version and enhancements to this great language. Before we start, it is also worth mentioning that although these are 7.5 enhancements, many of these features have been added to 7.4 and 7.3 through PTFs. As we always say, it's really worth keeping up to date with fixes on your box. Check out IBM's website for full details of the functions that have been added to 7.4 and 7.3. And ting ting, to get a notification of when this next video in this series is released, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Like and subscribe. And if you really like the time and effort we put into producing this video, please buy me a coffee. Let us get on with this video. The opcodes that have been introduced with the 7.5 release are as follows. The for each opcode that steps through the items in an array. The data gen opcode that generates a structured document. The send message opcode that sends a message to the job log. And the on accept opcode for monitoring a specific message. Let's get on with the first one on the list, the for each. Personally, I find this opcode a great addition. It's available to many, many other languages, whether it be PHP, Node, or any of the rest. It's one opcode that I widely use. The same can be said for for loops and the substring function. Let me explain this code. It won't take long, promise. Star star free indicates that the entire source member contains fully free format. No columns here, gov. Then a couple of standalone definitions. Del method is an array with six elements. Don't forget that the index of an RPG array starts at number one, not zero like many other open source languages. And method, a standalone variable of 52 characters. And then into the C specs, as they used to be known, we initialize the delivery methods array with six pieces of text. Then on to the for each opcode. The first value is the variable method that will contain each individual element of the array. So the first time it will have a value of air, then royal mail, etc, etc. Then we use the display opcode to print out the value of the method and go around and do it all again until we have run out of array methods to contain and end it off with a return. Here we can see the output from running that quick example program. Here we can see the values of the method variable output using the display method. Ah, that's a nice easy one to start with. The next one on the list is the data gen opcode. Let's take a look at this. The data gen opcode can be considered like the data into opcode. But whereas the data is used to read a source, the data gen opcode is used to write data or convert it. This opcode has three parameters to it. The first is the variable to be used as input, the variable we want to convert, usually a data structure, but doesn't have to be. The second parameter is the path to the save the document to on the IFS or a result variable. The third parameter is the name of the program or service program to confer our variable. This is yours or a supplier's program that does exactly what you want it to do for the conversion. The second and third parameters can also contain an optional options for how the format is to be structured and how the generator program is used and called. In this example, we are going to take a data structure, an RPG data structure containing employee details and create a JSON object from that data structure and store it on our IFS. Let me step through the code in this example. The first thing to point out is the declaration there of the emp file variable, so varchar 100, and it's initialized to the IFS in my home AUNS directory, and we're gonna call it employee.json, JSON. 
So that's where our data gen will be output to. And then we have a data structure, a DS employee, qualified, and it's got half a dozen parts. Surname, first name, and new address parts. Good old James Riddell gets a mention there as well. And then we go into the data gen, and we're going to convert the DS employee data structure. And the second parameter, we, we have to use percentage data, and the parameters for that are emp file. So this is where it's going to place it on the IFS. And then we're going to pass some parameters to it. So the doc is the file, so it's going to use the name of the file. We've got a CCS ID there of UTF-8, and the output is clear. So if we had any previous data there for testing, we're going to clear it down first and go straight to employee.json. And then there's a percentage gen. That's the, file, that's the name of the program we're going to actually use for the generation of our DS employee. And it's a YAJL DTA gen. My fellow IBM champion, Scott Clement, kindly provided this program for us. So, cheers, Scott. I'm not going to specify any parameters for the conversion program. The options for the conversion program are specified by the author of that program, so they can change. And that is it. Let me run this program, see what we get. There is no output from this example program, at least it hasn't errored. I'll switch over to my bash session and see what we got. A quick ls shows we have an employee.json file, that's good. Then a cat employee.json shows our employee, Jimmy Riddle, and all his details in a JSON object. If I copy and paste this into an online JSON validator, it shows me everything is good with the conversion. The data gen opcode is very powerful and adaptable to all our company's conversion needs. If you fancy creating your own generation program, take a look at IBM's QOAR library. There are some source examples in there, as well as a couple of conversion programs for you to try. Take a look. And on to the send message to job log opcode. Nice and straightforward this one. With send message, you can send an informational message or an escape message to a program or procedure on the call stack. Let me show you an example. Firstly, we start off with a free statement, line one, and then we've got a couple of lines for declaring variables, company and string. Then we come down and we can see a send message there, company name is, and passing in the company name. And the next one, very, very similar. This time I'm specifying asterisk info as the message type, but that is the default, so it doesn't really have to be specified. And then we send an escape message, which will cause an exception. So string equals whatever, and send message asterisk escape. And we're using the message file there, QCPF message, and the message ID, CPF9898, and passing it the message data of string, and rounding it off with a return. Running this example, what do we get? We can see the two informational messages, then the escape message, followed by the exception that we didn't cater for. Very poor, Andy. Yes, I know, it's only an example. And on to on accept. With on accept, you can monitor for specific message IDs in a monitor group. This is achieved by listing the message IDs in an on exception operation code. On accept is very similar to on error, but with on accept, you can list the message IDs to be monitored. Ah, just what I needed. Right, let me explain this bit of code. This part is the main line part of the program. We start it off with good old free, why not? And then we've got a control option, good old H specs. And then we've got a, got a couple of declares in there. First one, employee ID, zone 90, initialized to one. Then we have name and the company. Then we've got a monitor groups. So anything that goes wrong in that block, it's gonna get captured, hopefully. Name equals get employee, passing the employee ID. So that procedure takes in as input the employee ID and it returns the name. We'll take a look at that in a mo. So inside this block, then we've got on exception with a C to check it from a procedure. And we're gonna monitor for CPF 9898. 
And if it captures that, it just says employee not found on file. And then we've got a couple of other errors there. On error, 222, checking for pointers. So on error is just for general error handling, as it says there. And we end that monitor block. INLR, switch that on and return. All done. Time for home, as they say in the Navy. So that's the first part of our main line. Let's take a look at the procedure. So all this procedure is doing is chaining to a file, getting the record for the employee ID that was passed into it. If it can't find it, it throws out an error. Let's take a look. So we start the procedure off with a declare proc. It's called get employee. Then we have the procedure interface. Um, it's expecting 90 to come into it and it's going to return a, a variable of 30 varchar. Then we've got a file spec, good old F. Declare file, our employee index. It's just been used for input, it is keyed. And we've had to rename the format name from employee to mpar. And we then declare a data structure, DS employee. So that will be used to actually collect all the data that's coming back from the chain. And the next line, 146 is doing the chain. So that's going away to get the record from the employee file using the employee number as the key to it. And it bungs all the data into DS employee into the data structure. Then we're finding out if we've actually found it. If we can't find it, it sends message, it sends an escape message with a default of CPF 9898. So that's the default for escape. Else, it returns the employee surname from the data structure of DS employee. And that ends the procedure. Nothing special about it, just a quick chain and then deciding what to do about it. So, what do we get when we run this example? The first message is from inside the procedure after the chain. Then the second message is from the main line. That is using the on accept to capture the exception. And that covers the new or enhanced opcodes for version 7.5. Stand by for more RPG videos on my 40th year of being an RPG developer. If you need any further details about open source or IBMI, check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. In this video, we covered some significant features and benefits of IBMI. We hope you found this video informative and helpful. Learn from our experts and boost your skills on IBMI. Visit our website today and sign up for our training courses or buy us a coffee to show your support for our creative work. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.